Look how look how smooth and seamless that was, Hooky. I can't believe I did it. You've got the uh, you got the ear pods. You're on Instagram Live. Did you ever think there was a day that this would be going on? I didn't even know what Instagram was, <laughs> and I have learned over this time off how to uh, use ear pods. And as I told you, you need to get a pair. They're super cool. I'm gonna get some. You can't even tell they're on. It's perfect. Um, all right, so let's kick this off here. So everybody out there, we are absolutely pumped today to have Rick Vanderhoek with us, head coach, Cal State Fullerton. Man, we appreciate you joining us today. How you been, man? Um, been busy, but been bored. Been busy and bored. I mean, this is the longest period of time that I haven't done baseball in a long time. And yeah. uh, trying to get creative with the guys and trying to do just different things. As we go about stuff, I've been doing a, a lot of yard work. A lot of I yard heard, work. I heard, and uh, and a new puppy in the house too. So yeah, you've been staying busy. Uh, well, the puppy is my wife's and my daughter's and son, and but he is full of energy, full of energy. Yeah, and I, I'm sure you have plenty of uh, duties with that guy too. Uh, yeah, I, I play fetch with him because he likes to play fetch. Keep that arm loose, Hookie. Oh, it's 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 in shape. It's in shape. <laughs> hey, what are what are your guys? What what are all the guys on the team doing to stay ready during this thing? Like, what are they doing right now? Well, I mean, they've got to be creative. But you know, as we've tried to teach them, um, you, you don't need everything to do stuff. You know, everybody thinks they need a gym to lift. Everybody thinks uh, they need a trainer and all this stuff. Uh, how about do stuff on your own? If you don't have any equipment, find a way to do it. Uh, I have a son that's on the team and I made him put a pull-up bar in the backyard. We went down to Home Depot and bought all the stuff for it. He dug the post holes, mixed the concrete, uh, put it in and he does 200 pull-ups a day. Uh, and it works. There's different ways to do stuff than having to go and have all the proper equipment. They didn't have that proper equipment forever, and guys still got strong. That's right. It's a great time to be creative, right? Guys can, you know, get out. You can still play catch with your buddies. Let your bodies recover if you need to, and find ways just to stay active. Maybe maybe it's guys doing other stuff. Maybe it's guys uh, surfing a little bit or swimming or hiking. Just keep the body good. Uh, surfing's a great thing because it's a full body workout. I got about six guys that are uh, beach type guys, I will call them. And, uh, <laughs> you know, they don't, there's pools that weren't open. So they go to the beach and swim peer to peer. If you can swim peer to peer, you're in super shape. 100%. And those shoulders are going to be locked in when they get back. And there'll be a good workout. Well, let me, let me talk a little bit about you and Cal State Fullerton because the legacy and the heritage that, that, that's been going on for decades at Cal State Fullerton is impressive. So you just wrapped up your 30th season as a coach at Cal State Fullerton, spent 21 years as an assistant there, and just wrapped up your ninth as the head coach. In the 30 years, this is impressive, over, over 1,179 games won been to 25 NCAA tournaments with the team. I don't know if a lot of people know, but you were a player at Cal State Fullerton. You guys won the championship in 84. Um, as an assistant, you helped the Titans to the 95 and 2004 College World Series titles again. So you got three rings. Um, and then with the skipper of the Titans the last nine years, seven NCAA regionals, four supers, two Omaha appearances, and, you know, let's see four, five Big West titles and five Big West conference titles too. So the success continues to roll at Cal State Fullerton. How do you guys, how do you do that? How, how is that tradition and the legacy? I, I, I mean, it's, it can't be easy, but how, how do you build that mindset and the culture? Well, it, it's not us that build it. The, the players develop, develop it within the team. Uh, they know what they do and every team's a different team. We've, We've spent a lot of Zoom calls uh, talking about culture. Uh, we even over this time, uh, you get two units for the baseball class. So I made them do assignments and uh, put them in groups and had them take groups uh, that for say didn't win a national championship, but were successful. And how did they do that? And they had to call and interview papers and 
each guy had to write one separate page. Um, my associate AD, my supervisor has been there for a long time. So I let him grade the papers. Cool. Uh, and we gave him grades on it and made him, you know, put an effort into it just so they could realize what's going on and just what they're getting into because they see the wins, they see the big leaguers, they see the national championships. But th those don't happen until the end of everything goes on. You know, it's about what the process is and, and learning a little bit more about the process and what the other guys did because they have nice stuff and they didn't earn that stuff. That stuff was earned from the guys before them. So it's a, it's a lot about carrying on that tradition for the guys who've taken that field before them. Correct. And, Correct. and living up to their expectations. Well, they, they don't need to live up to expectations. They just need to stay with the process and let the process go. And the process takes care of itself. So talk a little bit about that. Cause I, that, that's intriguing. Like what is, what is the process that you guys talk about? Well, I mean, it, it starts day one and we don't do um, anything and we just sit down and talk about stuff on what's happened before and everything. And, you know, a lot of schools talk about Omaha, Omaha, Omaha from day one. Uh, Omaha doesn't happen unless you take care of the freaking 200 days before that uh, on a day-to-day -day process to get to that point. And um, that's what we try to instill in them. You know, we start, uh, we don't do anything the first two weeks of school because we want guys to get acclimated to college. You got a lot of freshmen, you got some junior college guys, you got guys that's knowing what's going on. So they need to get acclimated. They're all out of the house. They're in the dorms. Uh, we establish a, a set of rules, which is very simple. Uh, be responsible for your actions. Be accountable for your actions. And do things right. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be complicated as you go through stuff. But you, you need to learn what accountability is and you need to learn what responsibility is because it falls into every aspect of your life as you start growing up. And so we do that. And then we get in the weight room and start working out a little bit. It's a slow process. It's a very slow process, but then it starts to keep going and going and you don't forget what you've done. So you start, you learn something. It's just like going back to kindergarten. You learn your ABCs and your numbers before you move on to stuff and you work on it forever. Um, and some people still don't know numbers as they get older or the ABCs. So we take that type of approach. That's awesome. That's a cool process. And it makes so much sense, especially with the young guys coming in because that day in the life of a college baseball player as an athlete and a student is tough. It's, I mean, what, what is a typical day like? It's a full time job plus working overtime. I mean, a full day for us, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday is 6 a.m. Uh, in the weight room, uh, 7 a.m. starting work or uh, conditioning and, and speed training and just physical conditioning. Uh, 9.30, you start class. You're out by noon. Uh, 2 o'clock, we start practicing uh, and go through that. We do individual stuff for a few weeks. Um, and then we do team stuff for six weeks and then we're done. And then it's finals and it's getting ready to do your study time and do all your stuff as you go through that. So it, it gets complicated and you need to learn one thing at a time instead yeah. of trying to learn everything at once. It makes total sense. I, I think it's a great way of doing it. And it's obviously working for you guys there. You know, the next thing that I, I was going to talk about here is, you know, with that rich history of winning and going to College World Series, you guys have been given that nickname, Cal State Omaha, you know. Um, 18 trips made to Omaha, and, you know, you've won a national championship in four different decades, 79, 84, 95, and 2004. So many, many years of continued success. Um, what, what, is it, what is it that you look for in – a future Titan baseball player or a current one? What are the traits that make guys really good in the program? Uh, baseball players, guys that play baseball. Uh, we, we want guys that 
have an understanding of the game. Um, then you work on development of them as they go about it. Um, you know, there's nothing better than watching the draft yesterday with Torkelson uh, undrafted out of high school and won one three years later. Um, that's a big deal. Um, the scouts didn't like not one scout on 30 clubs, probably played in front of a thousand scouts uh, and a thousand guys were 0 for a thousand. Uh, so as he went about it, he got to that spot. Uh, Mark Kotze was a guy in the same boat, undrafted out of high school, uh, college player of the year. Matt Chapman, um, undrafted out of high school. Uh, that That's a big deal. That That's called development as you go about it. So it's nice to go. And even like Kurt Suzuki, uh, undrafted out of high school and even drafted in the second round out of college, was the second catcher that they drafted another catcher in the first round Oakland did and drafted him in the second. And 14 years later, he's, he's still in the big leagues with a world series under his belt. Unbelievable. It's awesome. I mean, yeah, I, I guess. So you're looking for those gritty guys who know baseball and love it and have a dedicated work ethic to come in and work day in, day out to get the job done. Yeah, exactly, man. I mean, you control your own destiny as a baseball player. You, you don't need to be uh, a quarterback and you don't have to be six foot four. Uh, you don't have to be a six foot seven inch point guard. You, you can be a little guy and play in the big leagues. There's tons of them that do it. Yeah. Um, it you just, but you control your destiny. And it, it's, just what you get out of what you put into it. it. It's not in the cards for every person. But as I said earlier, we don't talk about Omaha. We talk about preseason. We talk about conference. We talk about a regional. We talk about a super regional. And if you accomplish those goals, then you get the opportunity to play in Omaha. And you have to get there before you can play for a national championship. That's so right. So, so many steps. Send As you steps. say, trust trust the process. It's all about the process. Did you learn a lot of that stuff from the guys that you – I mean, man, you got to you got some unbelievable coaches that you got to come up with, uh, you know, Garrido and Horton and Savage. You've been with some awesome dudes. Do, do a lot of the guys follow the same type of thing, or have you built your own recipe over the years? Well, no, th this isn't even those guys. This is a guy named Ken Revisa. Ah, yep. Um, and so Ken started with this in 1983, my first year at Fullerton. Ken Revisa uh, used to work with us, and Ken was a great psychologist and not a very good baseball guy. So he taught himself through the process how to understand the game of baseball and has been – was super successful all the way through the Angels and, and the Rays and the Chicago Cubs, it was all a process. Joe Madden does a lot of that stuff. I read a lot of Joe Madden stuff because Joe is a disciple of Ken. Dave Snow was. When I went to UCLA, I told John, I said, dude, Ravisa lives right out here in Redondo Beach. It's close. He's retired from teaching. Let's get this guy. And so we got him, and, and he really, really helped them and helped us as coaches. Um, to deal with stuff because you're dealing with a lot of stuff. You've got a different yeah. 35 guys every year and you got to, it's not like you get to keep this team for a long time and it's amazing stuff. Constantly changing. I, you know, what that, that brings up something I, you know, I'll ask you, did the style of play, the style of coaching at Cal State Fullerton, does it change on a year to year basis based on players that you guys have coming in? Or is there one type of style that you typically play? Um, everybody says we play little ball, um, but it depends on your personnel, uh, your yeah. personnel. And you want a mixture of personnel. You know, I, I'm going to tell you, Matt Chapman knows how to bunt. J.D. Davis hit like 20-some home runs in the big leagues last year. He knows how to bunt, but they're not bunters, but they know how to do it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I tell the story to all our big old giant left-handed hitters. 
that I used to watch Big Poppy put down a drag bunt once in a while when they put everybody in right field. <laughs> and it was the greatest thing ever to see. Um, but he wanted to get to first base. Play the you game. Gotta, you got to touch first and second and third before you can touch home. And, and you know, the game is about driving in runs and scoring runs. Yeah. You know, all the, all, all the guys doing things. But it, it's, it's a body type. It's, it's certain things. You know, there, there's not a lot of uh, Bregmans of the world and Pedroyas of the world that are little Altuve who can hit the ball over the fence at a, at a small size. But as you go through stuff, it gets a little different. And you just want to be a well-rounded baseball player. Yeah. You know, the best compliments I get when our guys, oh, you went to Fullerton, you know how to play the game. Uh, yep, yep. Hey, man, as a guy who grew up in Southern California and you know, played in the Big West, I, I was always impressed when you roll into Fullerton, the, um, the way that they can get their job done as a player on the field, whether it's a pitcher, a position player, a hitter, base runner, the guys get it done. Totally. What's up, dude? Hi. Say what up, hooky? Hi, hooky. <laughs> They're going. Surfing. They're We're going. Go yeah, surfing. later. We're going later for sure. <laughs> hey, so let's let's try and wrap this up. I want you to talk about Goodwin Field for the people that haven't been out there. It's a heck of a facility, man. Tell them a little about the facility you guys have. Well, the, the Jerry Goodwin uh, was a car dealer guy in the city of Fullerton. Uh, I actually bought my first real car from Jerry Goodwin. On my way home one time from practice, I stopped in and said, Mr. Goodwin, I need a new car. But he, he was a fan forever. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure, and I'm not exact on this, but Fullerton has won more regional games on the road than any college in the history of college baseball. So we never got to play at home. Um, we would be a number one seat. We would be this, but we always had to play on the road. So they made an effort to build the stadium. And, and Jerry made a generous donation to build that. And then it wasn't big enough to hold super regionals. And so one year they built it big enough to put in super regionals. And, you know, the fan base just kind of grew as it went about um, – that they're, we're doing a $14 million project that I went by yesterday to throw some stuff in the trash cans and they're clearing stuff out already for it to start it uh, mid June, which we're almost there. And um, it, it's just, it's nice to have something like that. When I played, it was a regular field. Um, the, or the Rose bowl would store their bleachers at our field. So we had, wooden bleachers that were for the Rose Parade. Wow. Uh, that were stored there during the year. So after the parade, they roll the bleachers in and then come pick them up for the Rose Bowl the next year. Unbelievable. Um, you know, and, and now we have a locker room. We're building a new one. We're building new offices. We're, we're just trying to stay up in the 21st century um, as we go about our stuff and, you know, put a few amenities in there. But I, I don't want it to be – uh, and I've been places, Texas A&M. We were at Texas before the season ended. Uh, our, our guys aren't in the big leagues. And I want them to understand where they're at. I don't want them to think that, that they have everything. I don't need to play hard. I, I want them to have a little chip on their shoulder. And that, that's been the hardest thing to do lately is they have so much stuff that they get it. You know, I cut back on the shirts they get. When I got there, they were getting like 35 T-shirts for practice. Uh, that's wearing a different T-shirt every month. Doesn't work that way. Uh, we, I almost thought about getting two-sided T-shirts for the fall and making them wear it inside out and just switching it back and forth. There you go. From, from white to orange. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing place to go to work every day. I, I get to go to college every day and that's well i don't now because we're on lockdown not quite on lockdown as much it's opening up we're starting camp on tuesday so i'll be happy to just get out to a baseball field but you know haven't seen anything i watch a lot of korean baseball on tv yep bundesliga soccer 
Uh, well, I've been to Guangzhou where the um, Kia Tigers play. I took the team there like four years, three or four years ago we went there. And uh, so it's cool to go back and look at it. Play some games? Some, absolutely. Yeah, we played there for – we were there for 14 days. They they send a they send a doesn't don't they have a collegiate team that comes out every year for like a preseason? They they do. I think this year we're playing a team from Japan. Um, that's during there. That's when they're like in their off season, so they roll in. And um, yeah, Rod Dato started that many 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 years ago. Yeah, I I think I remember we played Rikio University or something like that. Yeah, you did. That is what they're called too. Yeah, Rikio. That's good memory. Yeah, I I got something. Something's left in the brain. I got. Totally. We usually play one of those pro teams in the preseason that trains in um, Arizona for spring training. I mean, they, they got good players out there. Great players. Yep. Hey, you know, here's the thing. When someone mentions the word to a baseball player, Fullerton, if you later in life, if the player is uh, looking for a house somewhere and someone says Fullerton, uh, whatever it is, you think of one thing, Cal State Fullerton baseball. So great history of success. Hookie, we love having you guys on Team Easton, man. Um, partnership, the relationship is, is, is great for us and has been, and we look forward to it for a long time. Beyond it. it and we are thankful to you guys. You guys are the best. We appreciate it, my man. Thanks for joining us today. Hookie, you stay safe, stay healthy, stay ready. I'll see you soon at a camp down there in the next couple of weeks. We'll get her done. You got it, BK. Thanks for having me. Okay. See you, man. See you, brother.